Well, it rained last night. Who knew? Back in April, Pastor Ryan and I, right after Easter, we, we sat down and we, we started to look at some of the readings that were going to come up for this summer. And then we were figuring out who's going to preach when and where and vacations and things like that. And I saw this text, the, the, the Mark passage that uh, Pastor read from Jesus calming the storm out on the Sea of Galilee that was coming up. So back in early April, I knew I was going to be preaching on that text. And then, look what happens. The night before I preach, we have a massive thunderstorm here in Northeast Illinois. You know, Lake St. Matthew is back in all its glory. We had all kinds of wind and rain last night and lots and lots of water everywhere. Not knowing that I was going to be preaching on this, it just happened to be that way. We go through storms in life, and some of the things that we go through are not what we really do expect, and God has a way of bringing us into those storms and through those storms. At the beginning of my vacation, when we were looking at spending some time with family and friends, a storm broke on Memorial Day weekend. If you remember that, it stormed that weekend as well. But it was a personal storm for us in our family. You know, we have been dealing with uh, our, our son and, and his epilepsy since the fifth grade. And on Memorial Day weekend, we were very afraid because he had to be hospitalized, not because of seizures, he had pneumonia. And he had an infection, and he had pleural effusion. They had to take fluid out of his lung, and he was hospitalized for four days on Memorial Day weekend. And we went through that storm. There's, there's those kind of storms. No matter what you, who you are or where you're going through, right, when, when a child of yours is sick, whether they're a little child or an adult, it's a storm that you go through. It's very difficult to go through. Because this is life. We go through storms in life. What sets apart you and I is how we react to those storms. Some of the storms that we face in life are sickness, as I mentioned. Either ourselves or someone we love. Could be the death of a loved one. Many, many people go through storms. We've had several deaths in the last couple of weeks that Pastor and I are being involved in the funeral pre uh, preparations for them. Life in 2024 America is a storm. If you think about it, the geopolitical storm that is actually encompassing the entire globe. Now, sometimes these storms are of our own making, leading an immoral life, pornography and extramarital affairs. Sometimes they are our own making through self-harm, drugs and smoking and drinking. Sometimes these storms happen just because this is the way life is in this world. We have a, a Bible. You have read it. We read it in church every week. And in the Bible are recorded stories of people that go through storms. And the reason that they are recorded for us is so that we know how to react, or we can at least see how other people react to the storms of life. You had Noah and his big storm. We all thought maybe last night it was coming back again, but thankfully the rainbow in the sky promises that God will never destroy the earth by water again. But he got through that storm by trusting in God. Moses and the storm of 40 years of leading the children of Israel through the wilderness. Then there's King David and Bathsheba, a storm of his own making, where he's looking where he shouldn't look at, the person he shouldn't be looking at, and gets so involved that it actually leads him to murder. Even Jesus went through storms. He had two storms on the Sea of Galilee that we know about. The first one we heard about already. Jesus asleep in the back of the boat during a storm on the Sea of Galilee. There will be another storm where the boat is out in the distance and Jesus walks on the water in the midst of the storm. But the ultimate storm that Jesus went through were the six hours that he was on the cross paying the penalty for our sin. Three of those hours in complete darkness. Jesus faced all of these storms for us to save us from the storm of sin, to give us the power 
to endure the storms and provide salvation that gets us through all the storms of this life into the everlasting peace of the new heaven and the new earth. So, what do we do? What sets us apart from everyone else that's going through storms? As a follower of Jesus, we need to lean on Jesus. Lean on Jesus. Hold fast to Jesus. Don't let go and praise the one who calms the storms. My wife and my son, we're, we're binge watching uh, some, some TV shows during the summer months uh, when uh, we want to get out of the heat. We come inside and we're watching The West Wing. And it, as it happens, last night, the episode that we watched contained a story that I love. I love this story and it illustrates this so perfectly well, how Jesus is the one who calms our storms. A man was walking down the road and he fell into a hole and he couldn't get out. And he sees a doctor walk by and says, hey, can you help me out of this hole? And the doctor writes a prescription and throws it down into the hole. A little while later, the man sees a priest walk by and says, father, can you help me out? And the father writes down a prayer, throws it down into the hole. Finally, he sees his friend walking by and says, Joe, can you help me out? And Joe jumps into the hole with him. And the man says, Joe, what are you doing now? We're both stuck down here. And Joe says, yeah, but I've been here before, and I know the way out. That's Jesus in our storms. When we cry out to God in the midst of the storms of sickness, or the storms of our own doing, or the storms that happen to us around us just because we're here, Jesus comes to us and says, I've been here before and I know the way out. Hold fast to me. And as it is a gospel truth, Jesus calms the storms. We heard about it in Mark 4. We'll hear about it again when Jesus walks in the water. Jesus calms the storms. But sometimes he doesn't calm the storms. We pray out to him, please calm the storm. He doesn't calm the storm so much as he calms your heart in the midst of the storm. One, one way or the other, calm comes. And so we should praise the one who calms the storms. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.